Good morning. This is Edward with SonsOfGod.com, of course. It's Wednesday, June 22nd. Anne and I had a couple of things that we wanted to set the stage for for tomorrow night's meeting. That would be Thursday. We've yet to determine uh, what service we're going to use for that. And we're still looking into options, but you will get notified. A couple things that have been coming is that the Lord is taking all of this very serious. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, and as such, uh, the words that are coming are plowing deeply. As we said last week, if God is not in your face, then it's not working. If you're not going through uh, 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 um, changes, then it's not working. If all you're getting are goosebumps and 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 you know what not, then it's not working. Uh, and I know that's not the case uh, for the most part. It's interesting when you think of how trees grow. Uh, some of you that are you know, more in in the agriculture industry. Um, you know, the roots go so much deeper than what you see uh, sprouting upwards. And so that's what the Lord continues to do with us, continues to take the shovel in our life and continues to dig deeper, let the roots go down deeper and deeper. As I said before, and this is a little bit of a sober word, so but it's definitely going to set the stage for what has to come tomorrow because we're talking about we're not talking about just learning about spiritual functioning and and some of the oohs and the ahs but we're talking about what is it going to take for the kingdom to fully come forth within us where are we i mean the fact that we're at this point and that we have this capability of sight and understanding is a miracle. I mean, it is. It is uh, one of a million. One, whatever. It's. It's. It's a very special thing. But we also know that we're not there yet, and that's a dichotomy. Because in one respect, we are there. In one respect, we've been there for a long time. But in the other respect, we're not there yet. So we're in this transition, and God is plowing more deeply within our hearts, so that His Word. And the impartation can go deeper. Like I said in the last call, you know, it's, 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 it's the Lord knocking on the door. And you open the door and say, come in, Lord. And he says, well, all right, um, looks good. But you realize, well, there's a basement that he doesn't have access to, and there's an attic. You know, and there might be a few other rooms he doesn't have access to. Yet in your drive to give your heart as a free will offering to the Lord, you've given him everything you can. And within, the, within your capability, you have. But we have not understood that it takes a deliverance from the Lord to be able to give ourselves fully. You just, you just can't, no one can just say, okay, I give myself fully. You can't do that. It's, it's, it's not possible. Not fully. To the degree and the measure that you're able in the state of growth change that you're in, yes. But it has to be the miracle of, trans, uh, of impartation from the Lord uh, that enables you to truly be able to give yourself, which is the longing of our heart. I mean, it really is. I want to so fully give myself to the Lord with nothing held back. And I understand to do that, the Lord has to bring an impartation and a, a deeper change that will allow me to be able to give myself fully. So some of you are going through the struggle of the soul man and the spirit man because the soul man doesn't want to commit, doesn't want to give himself. And it's nothing new. You talk about Armageddon, all of you are in Armageddon, the real Armageddon, the Armageddon of the kingdom. Will the soul move in ascendancy over the spirit or will the spirit, 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 spirit 
move in ascendance here over the soul. That's the Armageddon in your life. That's the Antichrist in your life, in all of our lives. So, to go back for a moment, before we go into the next aspect of teaching, which concerns um, transference and other mm, things, we need everything to go deeper. We need the impartation to go deeper. The impartation is coming from the Lord, but it's only going to a certain point in your life, in my life. And we need to have all the doors open so that when He pours forth His Spirit fully, we are able to fully be saturated. And if, if you let that really sink in, you realize everything in the Word is God's grace, and nothing of our own accord. You know, the scriptures, you know, in the day of thy power, thy people will be a free will offering, as if we have anything to do about it. It's all His grace. It's all His grace. And yes, our drive, my drive, my demand, my cry, my my travail is to be completely given to the Lord. But once you understand that you're not, then you can start doing some homework. And I'm not voicing unbelief. I'm just voicing a reality that there are still rooms in this house that we haven't opened the doors to. Because I'll tell you what, if we were completely given to the Lord, then I wouldn't be bringing this word and we would be standing glorified in His presence because He is pouring forth His Spirit upon us and the depth of who and what Christ and the Father is is fully within us. So what's holding back resurrection life? What's holding back the final stages of glorification? It's because it has not been able to permeate every facet and every level of your being. So the transformative power of God has been restricted and hindered to a degree because of your inability to really give yourself. And so God is saying, all right, I'm going to take you serious. You are stepping up. Um, the call is upon you. The time of change is here. So we've got to take this deeper because it can't be when I'm pouring forth all that I am, it cannot be a thimbleful or a trickle. It must be a torrent. So we continue to plumb the depths of our heart. And every morning, as I wait before the Lord, I'm always doing that. I'm trying to empty myself out some more. I know we've, we've spoken about that. He came and He emptied Himself out. Likewise, so we do as well. We continue to empty ourselves out. And that has to be such a revelation. Because otherwise you don't realize that that's part of the homework that has to be done. So for what we're doing to go to the next level, we've talked about intensity and violence and, um, and my mind went blank. And you know, just some God in us, giving God His voice, all of these things so very, very important as the basic building blocks from which we move forward. Now we just have to open up and just let it go deeper. And I'm not looking at a process, I'm not looking at a time, I'm not looking at weeks of working on stuff. It's just that yesterday the Lord began to speak. Uh, we've been busy the last couple of days and so my window of time has been less. But immediately, we're sitting down to our cup of matcha in the morning, and, uh, and the Lord began to speak yesterday. And I know I touched on it in the book, but we're going to dive more deeply into it so that you understand it even more clearly. 
And he said, you must be delivered from the religious spirit. And I understood what he was talking about because it still, to some extent, is a filter through how we hear and how we see. We haven't quite fully come out of the system yet. We haven't quite fully identified the religious spirit that still has a measure of functioning. So, um, like I said, this is quick homework, but it will always be ongoing as you come before the Lord. And this morning he spoke even a stronger word. It's one he brought to us about a year ago when we were driving through the canyon. I put it down on tape and I thought we would bring the word and, and it wasn't time. And it was a very strong word. And if you did not have a heart that was prepared, it would really uh, seem pretty strange. But it has to do with the deliverance from the perverse spirit. The effects of the spirit of perversion that's within all of our lives. And you think, well, are we talking about some physical, sexual thing? Of course not. Those are all just leaves and branches. But we're talking about something that has been fostered by the perverse spirit of this age within our hearts and our thinking. So what is perversion? Well, look you can look out in Christianity, aside from all of the external obvious things going on. It's just the perversion of his word, what he is. So tomorrow, we're going to, to, to dive into this. I would ask of you that you would have your communion here. And as we bring the word, have communion throughout the word, and at the end, we will take a few minutes and have communion together. Because I want this to be done. I want the axe laid to the root. Uh, I want to just move on. And I don't want to dwell on this. But, um, but there just needs to be something that's brought to the surface, identified, so that you can see how it's functioned within your own heart. I know that we've had different ones that have come to the site, you know, that we've corresponded with at times, and they all come, all come with the trappings of the religious spirit, all. Like we said in the book, uh, some of the deepest manifestations of the religious spirit are in no way related to uh, religion. Uh, it's just, it's just it, because it's a prevailing uh, a canopy. So, we agree together that God brings a deeper deliverance, a deeper impartation, so that we are able to receive that much more of what he's pouring out. Yeah, I read something once John had said to me, he said, you know, what's resurrection life going to be like? And he says, I think it's just like opening up a valve. It's as simple as just opening up a valve and it pours in transformation. So God is opening up the valve and he is pouring it forth. And it must be that it is able to saturate to the very depth of our being. It must be. I don't want it to just saturate to a certain degree. You know how sometimes they say, you know, break up the fallow ground? Why? Because if you pour water on fallow ground, it's not going to saturate. It'll just, it won't go anywhere. So you break up the ground. It's been encrusted and, and hard, and the, the, the winds and the weather and the elements have, have, have conditioned that soil, and it's hard. So it's not able to take the outpouring of rain. And God comes, uses that as an example to his people and says, come break up the fallow ground. So you go and you plow, you break it up so that the impartation can go deeper. And I declare to each and every one of you a deliverance from the religious spirit 
and the perverse spirit or pervert spirit of perversion this day so that the impartation of what God is bringing to us will fully saturate us. A month from now, two months from now, I don't want to be talking about what it's going to be like to be in resurrection life or to experience the glorified body or to experience the Shekinah glory on a deeper level. I don't want to talk about what it will be like. I want to be on the other side saying, this is what it is because we've possessed it and he has fully possessed us. Isn't that how Paul said that I might possess, you know, that uh, how to go, uh, well, I can't think of it offhand, but that he might be fully possessed even as he was called. Well, you understand what I'm saying. I remember, oh, 30 some years ago when Ann and I were first married, the minister, who was John at the time, afterwards in the ante room we were talking and he looked at me intently and says I want to fully possess you I knew we're not talking men we're talking it was the Lord and that's all it was uh, it was not about ministry and positions and people it was, it was the Lord's declaration I realized Lord but I'm giving myself I'm given to you Lord and yet it was like I don't have enough access yet. You haven't gone through enough of the work of the cross. The ground has not been broken up. You still have too many rooms that you have not opened up yet. But it is my desire to fully possess you. 100%. That's what's on the table. That's what's on the table. And I'm determined that we will get this. By God's grace, with shouts of grace, grace. Lord, Zechariah's time has come. It's the time that we shout with grace, grace, O God. Finish thy work within us. The great miracle of transformation. The greatest, greater work that we will see is the transformation of the sons. It's truly a greater work, one that was reserved for this time as Christ universalized himself in a body of people to bring them forth. 